This episode is made possible by CuriosityStream. Get free access to Nebula, the streaming platform built by all your favorite YouTubers, when you sign up for CuriosityStream at the link below. The United States Military, the largest, most powerful, most dangerous fighting force on the planet. A military that hasn't been involved in a defensive war since the 1940s yet whose budget continues to balloon every year. U.S. military spending currently exceeds that of the next 10 nations combined. We have over 600 military bases outside our borders, occupying over 80 countries around the world. The United States military, while it tries to sell itself as a force for freedom and democracy, is not a welcome sight in much of the world. Our aggressive posturing, bullying, and occupation has turned world opinion against the U.S. armed forces over the past few decades and it's not hard to see why. When you think of a modern fighting force, you typically think of tanks, fighter jets, Humvees, drones, and aircraft carriers. But these giant death machines don't operate on their own. The US military, like any other, relies on recruits, Americans willing to pick up arms and kill for their country. In this episode, we're going to take a look at the state of US military recruiting and the shady tactics used by the armed forces to rope in new soldiers. Before we begin, let's take a second to discuss why the U.S. feels like it needs such a massive military. Since the end of World War II, and certainly since the end of the Cold War, the United States has been the sole world superpower. This has given the country the luxury of using that power to clamp down on the world's economy with an iron grip. The U.S. relies on other countries relying on it. If another country doesn't feel the need to grovel for U.S. assistance and trade deals, the U.S. military will often be called in to create an environment that forces that country to reevaluate. If crippling sanctions aren't enough, boots on the ground certainly will be. But if the United States already has such a stranglehold on the rest of the world, why does the military budget keep increasing? A large part of it is to feed the ravenous military-industrial complex and deliver lucrative contracts to companies like Boeing, Lockheed, and Raytheon. But more recently, U.S. officials have cited the possibility of a great power conflict with China. That kind of talk should alarm us. The last great power conflict, though it never devolved into outright war, was the Cold War with the Soviet Union, during which time we almost caused nuclear annihilation on multiple occasions. Before that, it was World War II. If U.S. officials are gearing up to start another war of this magnitude, the world is in for a very bad time. With this aggressive rhetoric becoming more common, the U.S. military has been adamant about maintaining a fighting force of 500,000 soldiers, and this requires an intense recruiting program. So, how does the world's largest military entice the next generation of soldiers? Well, these days, it seems to be with cartoons that appropriate inclusive language, video games, and taking advantage of those in poverty. Let's start with the video games. I'm sure you're all familiar with Twitch. If somehow you're not, Twitch is the largest live streaming platform in operation right now. They bring in insane numbers of both streamers and viewers, averaging roughly 3 million concurrent viewers at any given time, who watch a total of around half a billion hours of content per week. That's a huge audience, and a lot of time spent on individual streams, which can run for hours. As far as demographics go, the audience skews young and male, with about 65% of viewers being male, 41% between the ages of 16 and 24, and 73% between the ages of 16 and 34. To military recruiters, Twitch is a dream come true. You have a captive audience of young, impressionable viewers who tend to develop parasocial relationships with the streamers they watch. It's the perfect medium for young, charismatic recruiters to pitch the military to the next generation. And they know this. In 2018, the U.S. Army launched its own Twitch channel as part of its new, more modern approach to recruitment. The Navy followed suit shortly after. In the first six months of 2020, the military had bagged 13,000 new recruiting leads from Twitch alone. Keep in mind that many Twitch users are underage, as you only have to be 13 years old to make an account. So, you have young, incredibly malleable children watching trained Army and Navy recruiters play games like COD and Fortnite for hours on end, while they surreptitiously try to convince their viewers to join the military. If this sounds incredibly shady and predatory, that's because it is. And it gets worse. Early in their streaming endeavors, the Army esports mods would ban users for asking about U.S. war crimes, until they were eventually forced to unblock those people after accusations of First Amendment violations. Then there's the Navy claiming that their streamers aren't recruiters, despite the fact that they're required to take the same training courses as Navy recruiters before they're considered for the role. 
The ARMY even went so far as to just straight up lie and put up a link to a fraudulent Xbox giveaway, which, when clicked, instead took you to an ARMY recruitment information form. This was later taken down by Twitch. Hassan Piker, one of the most popular leftist streamers, rightly accused these recruitment practices as being predatory. Shout out to Hassan, by the way. Thanks for boosting my videos. You should all go watch him if you don't already. Now, Twitch is just one cog in the modern military recruitment machine. Another shameful practice is specifically targeting poor students who have few opportunities. Back in the 70s, the New York Times ran a story about how Sergeant Hard Times is the best recruiter in the world, rightly pointing out the fact that in times of economic precarity, people are driven to latch on to whatever opportunities they can find. This is still very much the case today. When job or life prospects are lacking, recruiters can weaponize that fear and uncertainty to press young people into service. One recent program offers the perfect example of how the military targets those in precarious conditions. In what's been dubbed Focus 22, the Pentagon has selected 22 cities which have large black and Latino populations. Recruiters descend on these cities like buzzards, stationing themselves in schools and public places to try to ensnare as many young people as possible. Some cities, like Baltimore, have allowed the military to install their March to Success software on all the city's public computers. This software is meant to look like a study aid, but it also collects user data so that recruiters can track down anyone who uses it. If keeping a database of a city's young people sounds bad, just wait till you hear about the Jammers database. Jammers, or the Joint Advertising Market Research Study, is a billion-dollar database that catalogs the data of over 30 million Americans between the ages of 16 and 25. This database was classified as top secret until 2005. Preying on the poor isn't new. Militaries throughout history have used their poor as cannon fodder while the rich, those benefiting from the wars, never have to send their children to die. It's a hideous practice, and it reflects very poorly on this nation that so many people feel like they have no alternative. So, we've seen soldiers trying to ensnare underage gamers to become pawns in their death machine, and government programs to collect the peasants and ship them off to blow up their fellow human beings on the other side of the world. But there's one more aspect of the military's recruitment initiative that we should discuss. And in a surprising twist, it's probably the one that's gotten the most bad press. For as long as we've had a military, there have been propaganda campaigns to try to convince citizens to enlist. For the last couple decades, recruitment ads have generally looked like something out of Black Hawk Down or Call of Duty. Big scary guys driving amphibious vehicles, rappelling out of helicopters, and running around shooting at bad guys we never see. But in this most recent attempt at winning over Gen Z, the army has taken a page out of the CIA's book and appropriated diverse, inclusive language as a way to say, hey, we're modern and cool. We're not just a bunch of trigger-happy barbarians, we're just like you. In a five-part ad series titled The Calling, the army shares what are supposedly genuine stories from enlisted soldiers. But because the military knows that all them young people care about is cartoons, they also animated the ads in a few different styles. Let's take a look at a few highlights from the series. One time, I snuck out and stayed three days at a friend's place. When I came home, mom wanted to teach me to appreciate the life I had by sending me to the Dominican Republic to stay with relatives for a year. One day at school, I came upon an army recruiter and told him about my goals. He took me through all their different careers, and that's when it hit me. The army is an army of good people. Pay close attention to how seemingly innocuous statements are phrased. I was bad, so my mom sent me to another country to see how bad it is compared to the United States. When I came back, I realized that the U.S. is the best country on Earth, and the Army is good because America is good. So as soon as I turned 17, I asked for my dad's blessing to enlist. But having served in the Army during the Vietnam era, responding to civil unrest, he said no. He had his reasons. I hope his reasons were recognition of the fact that the Vietnam War was just one long string of U.S. war crimes, during which period we massacred innocent people, dropped more bombs than during the entire Second World War, riddled the land with millions of mines, rained fire down on civilian populations, and used chemical weapons which are still causing cancer and birth defects to this day. All for a conflict we never should have initiated in the first place. Of course, by the end of the ad, Dad is proud of his little girl for joining anyway. But it was one day during a 9-11 ceremony, I started seeing the army in a new light. 
Over 3,000 students lined the walls and the balconies of my school. My whole community was there, including firefighters and service members from every military branch. The silent show of respect for this country was deafening. I was now determined to defend this nation that I called home. And to not only be a citizen, but a soldier as well. This is another common tactic. Hey, remember that bad thing that happened? Look how strong it made us. Look how respectful everyone is of the flag and our country. I'm gonna join the army. Of course, there's no mention of the fact that 9-11 was used as justification to start an unjustifiable war, which claimed over a million lives, destabilized an entire region for decades, and dragged on for so long that Americans who enlisted back then have now been able to watch their children go off to murder the children of the people they didn't manage to kill. The U.S. military industrial complex is very skilled at using the symbology of the flag as a way to deflect blame, promote a victim complex, and play up the American exceptionalism myth all at the same time. For many people, this kind of ad can be quite effective. But the one that got the most attention, and we'll explore why afterwards, is this one. This is the story of a soldier who operates your nation's Patriot missile defense systems. It begins in California, with a little girl raised by two moms. I like to think I've been defending freedom from an early age. I needed my own adventures, my own challenge. And after meeting with an army recruiter, I found it. A way to prove my inner strength and maybe shatter some stereotypes along the way. If you take a look at this ad on YouTube, or any of them really, you'll see that they got absolutely eviscerated by the viewers. The like to dislike ratio is among the worst I've ever seen. And of course the comments are turned off because there likely wouldn't be a single positive one. Why did these ads flop so hard? The army managed to outsmart itself and alienate all of their potential recruits. Those on the political right are all up in arms over the woke language and outraged at the idea that the army is trying to appeal to people who clearly don't belong in the military. Though it is funny to watch these reactionary losers have their little meltdown, what's more important is why the ads fell flat for their target audience, younger, more progressive members of Gen Z. Trying to be more inclusive is good. Acknowledging the validity of all sorts of quote, non-traditional backgrounds is important. But it shouldn't be surprising that Gen Z, the most anti-war, anti-capitalist generation in decades, sees right through the propaganda. I like to think I've been defending freedom from a young age. Come on. Young people know what the US military gets up to. They live on the internet. They can find plenty of evidence of the mountains of war crimes the US commits. They're aware of past military policies against gay and trans service members. But more than that, they're aware that being allowed to serve in the military isn't some great victory for the LGBT community. Because no one should want to invade other countries and oppress their fellow human beings. No matter how hard the military tries to rebrand itself as a woke force for good, freedom, and democracy, no matter how cute they try to make missile launchers, most young people won't fall for it. They know they're being targeted with short, eye-catching, animated propaganda. Of course, these ads will appeal to some young people and they'll soon find themselves in a situation that is nothing like what's been presented to them. And that's a shame. It's despicable that the military has to steal data, corrupt underage stream viewers, target the poor and desperate, and try to sell a lie to meet their quota of cannon fodder for a great power conflict the United States so clearly wants. The military always has and always will use shady, predatory tactics to fill their ranks. The best we can do is be aware of it, provide truthful information about what joining the military really means, and work towards building a society that doesn't funnel the poor and the impressionable young into the imperialist war machine. Without soldiers to fly their drones, fire their rockets, and drop their bombs, the military can't function. It can't bully the rest of the world. And that sounds pretty good. If you'd like to see what great power conflict looks like, to truly understand the horror of world war, I highly recommend you check out Apocalypse World War II on CuriosityStream. It's an incredible six-part series about the chaos and destruction of the Second World War. And it's so important that people realize just how capable humans are of destroying ourselves. CuriosityStream is an established streaming platform with a solid track record of caring about great educational content and the financial security of those who produce it. 
they've got thousands of nonfiction titles from some of the best filmmakers in the game. As you probably know, YouTube doesn't treat its creators very well. That's why some of my YouTuber friends and I teamed up to build Nebula, so we don't have to worry about demonetization. As educational creators ourselves, we love CuriosityStream, so we've worked out a deal, where if you sign up for CuriosityStream at the link below, you'll also get access to Nebula, 100% free. That's less than 15 bucks a year for both CuriosityStream and Nebula, which, in my humble opinion, is a pretty great deal. Since most of us are still waiting for the vaccine, why not spend some time learning about fascinating topics on CuriosityStream? Or check out Nebula's original content, including my upcoming series on the resurgence of fascism. You can also watch all my videos as they were intended, ad-free. There really is something for everyone, and by signing up at the link below, you're helping us produce more content without the fear of demonetization. Give CuriosityStream a shot, and get free access to Nebula when you sign up using the link below. It really does help support my channel and educational creators all across YouTube. If you enjoyed this video and you'd like to see more like it, consider subscribing to stay up to date with my latest episodes. If you hated it, go ahead and drop a thumbs down. You can check out my previous episodes by clicking the links on your screen. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next week.